Robert Earnshaw loves scoring against Derby. He also enjoys scoring a hat-trick against Leicester. He'll tell you about his three years at Nottingham Forest next. Well, Rob, great to see you. Um, most Forest fans, I think, will know you for your three years, obviously, at the club and, and scoring so regularly against, against Derby. You seem to take um, a lot of joy in doing so. <laughs> of course. Um, you know, I think... You know, when you when you are a footballer, you know you, you obviously you want to score goals and you want to do well and and do well for your team. But also the main thing is you want to do well in the big games. You know, and everybody you know tries to play it down. But listen, let's face it, the big games are the big games. There's a difference. You know, there's the the local rivalry. There's the one that you know maybe you've got already a little bit of a rivalry with from from history between clubs. But obviously, Derby being you know the actual derby of um you know forest and forest and derby is um was huge for me because what you uh what you have is a game and exciting you know the fans are looking forward to it you know teams very very close in location wise and um for me it was uh also the 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 other thing was is my ex club and uh the team I was at before going to forest so it just added that spice that um that interest and um you know for me it's, you know when you can go to your old club and do well those are the big games I was looking forward to, forward to and um I was happy and in, enjoyed scoring against derby so much <laughs> so good times did it, did it mean more because you'd obviously just come straight down the A52 and had well, we'll talk more about it perhaps in a bit, but um, I don't think it was the most happy time of your career at, at Pride Park. Did it did it kind of get you more up for the game, the fact that you were facing a side where you'd not enjoyed the best of times? Absolutely, yes. It it, it does mean more because what you want to do is, you know, when you've maybe, you know, not had a good time or, or something um, has not been pleasant uh, at your old club, what you want to do is you want to go back there and show well this is actually you know what uh, what i'm about this is actually what i do and and this is and this is how we play football and this is how we score goals so for me it was it, it was about that and um you know i was i went to derby i spent a year at derby and it was very quick that i needed to leave uh to progress football wise um things weren't quite right the club behind the scenes there's a lot of things it wasn't just about the football pitch so it was a lot of things uh, around the club that wasn't quite right so it was about um you know and, and for me you know i'm a, a you know a football romantic that um i want to play football i want to score goals i want to enjoy myself i want to make the fans happy and i want my team to do well so that's what it was about and it wasn't happening there at derby for lots of other reasons so that's why you know, going to Forest was was key. It struck me that perhaps the game at Pride Park when you scored the winner in the one nil win late on, uh, that was perhaps a kind of um, an example of you remaining as calm as anything in that in because that finish was was fantastic. And it, but I think if you got caught up in the moment or what was about to happen, you probably couldn't have done what you in the end did. Yeah, I mean, we go we go to to Pride Park, and we you know never beaten uh, Derby at Pride Park uh, at Pride Park, and um, it was you know a game that could have changed either way. But sometimes these games and some things, you know, the the football gods um, they give you a little moment to uh, that's you know is it coincidental? Is it uh, fate? Um, it just happened to be that um, it was going to be this game where. I score the winner, you know, my old team, yeah, I played there. It's, you know, big game. So the, the moment where I score the goal, it was about, it was actually, so for example, for me, I spent loads of hours, you know, and you, you spend loads of hours. So when you, when you get on the pitch and there's a finish like that, when I scored the winner against Derby, it was, it was repetition. There's the times in training all the time, you know, you know, repeating the chance repeating the uh, you know that shot i did uh i did that shot from the edge of the box so many times in training that when it came to that that's what you're focusing on and that's what i that's what the moment that's what it felt like it felt like you know i've done this 
you know, so many times before this actual shot, this positioning, the technique and, um, you know, where I'm aiming to the, to the corner. So everything happened that way. And I, you know, I remember, uh, Nathan Tyson goes down the left. Um, and I'm thinking the position, where am I supposed to be in the box here? Where's the defender? So I'm breaking it down in, 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 in game this way. And, you know, Tyson cr uh, crosses the ball. It goes a little bit too far to, to Anderson, but in that moment I knew pull back same as training pull back um i just gave the position to you know to the signal to to uh to paul anderson he just nodded down here uh because i did it so many times in training and um you know he's nodded it down and it was a first time hit because i knew uh this is the action that happens here and this is this is how you score a goal and um and that's exactly what, what happened so in that moment it was it was because of the practice. It was because of the times I spent on the training pitch. And um, listen, you know, and that's why you, that's why you love it. That's why you become a footballer because you put the practice into the game. And in the game situation, you love it when it all goes to plan. And it did. And the ball goes in. And um, you know, and and my favorite moment in football is the time to celebrate. And uh, that was the moment I went celebrated. Celebrated the, the fans are behind the goal there. Uh, right behind the goal that I scored in and um, and you know I went and celebrated with them my teammates come over and that's those are the moments that you love about football those are the moments that you always remember and you, uh, that feeling is is really something else and were you kind of looking back at you know perhaps not in the immediate moment but maybe as you ran back towards halfway thinking I showed them I can score goals because <laughs> I mean you scored in the goal the game at the city ground the famous 5-2 didn't you but yeah. I wonder whether it meant more going to their place and doing it. It, it. it did in a way, because obviously that same season, we beat them 5-2 at home. So we thought, great. Yeah, I mean, that was a huge win, historical for the club. And you, what you want to do also, you know, I, I, I wanted to create a history at Forest. I wanted to leave people with memories that they can hold on forever and the the memories that um you know in 50 years time 20 years whatever it is they can always go back to and feel that moment so i wanted to to have that and we were lucky enough to beat them five to a moment that the fans could just really enjoy uh on that gloomy night in uh you know in um at the city ground so we did beat them five two we go and it was a chance to do the double over them as well so you know, and um, obviously that's not been done before. So when we go to to Derby to try and beat them, you know, and, and do the double, you know, uh, in that season, it was um, something we we wanted to do. We we felt we could do, and um, to to actually do it uh, was special because you, you want to create those history moments. Uh, this is the first time this has been done. You know, this has never been done before. And when we go and do it. So those things were I felt were special to me. And um, I, I love those moments because you want to, like I said, you want to leave people with uh, historical moments um, in, in your time with the club, historical moments that they could always treasure. And uh, and that's, you know, what, what happened. So we love that. And um, and we could all celebrate and enjoy it. Was there any um, hesitation? I suppose you, you came to Forest after they got promoted from League One into the, the Championship. Was there any hesitation in, in doing that? Because you started under Colin Calderwood and it was a struggle, wasn't it, for, for Forest in that early, early part of the season until Billy Davis came in. Perhaps we'll talk a bit more about him in a moment or two. Um, but was there hesitation in, in making the move to a club that had just emerged back into the Championship? Yeah, well, there was uh, because, you know, Forest for a number of years now, we're dropping and dropping, you know, you know, they dropped down the leagues a little bit. They weren't uh, because, you know, history going back. I remember uh, Forest in the Premier League. I was watching. I was watching, you know, Stan Collimore and, and Brian Roy. And I was watching, you know, and, and sharing them. And I was watching, um, you know, and Stuart Pierce. Obviously, you know, I can go on all the names. So I remember watching Forest. Um, in in those historic obviously the history before that as well and um you know fast forward on the club wasn't you know in that high level you know wasn't even in the championship back then so it, you know i i watched them get promotion um that um that season before and um i thought great you know what a what a good club it is anyway 
but I'm happy that they're doing because you you know it's a club that I think uh, people that enjoy watching, but they want them to do well as well. So I'm watching Forest from afar. I'm at Derby, and um, I'm thinking you know you know good for them. They've got promoted, but then I also at the same time knew of interest that Forest uh, had in me because there was whispers you know maybe three or four months before of you know I think Forest if they do go up they'll be interested in you. Uh, I didn't think too much of it, but then obviously get Forest get promoted. Um, then uh, they came in and, and actually put a bid in for me. And I was, um, you know, obviously something I had to consider. I was at Derby at the time. Forest just went up. They've they've put a bid into me. They're they're interested. But then, you know, two or three other clubs also were also interested. So I was thinking, OK, you know, where is the where's now my direction? Because I knew I was I was leaving Derby anyway. It was, it was close to the end of the season. I knew I was leaving Derby, but it was about, okay, where do I see myself going and progressing? And also the main thing is, you know, which team uh, and the platform and, and the club as it is uh, gives me the platform to do well on the pitch, gives me the platform to score goals and and also to add value to the team, to, to you know, to, uh, to go to a team that uh, helps me progress forward, but also we can do something, we can achieve something as well. So... Uh, it was a bunch of clubs, and um, it was. I took a, I took a few weeks to just kind of consider it, but um, you know, I, after you know, kind of you know, bringing it down to Forest was one of them. There was a couple of other clubs as well. I just thought, you know, Forest just got promoted. Um, there's a bit of a young team there, inexperienced team, but it, it needs you know, it needs a goal scorer. Um, I knew of the history of the club. I have thought I, I just felt that Forest was the place that I could go and do well. And um, after a bit of hesitation, uh, I made my mind up. And um, and then Colin Calderwood, um, we had good conversations with him. I think he was key because I, um, I really, really enjoyed his company. I enjoyed uh, what he was trying to do. Um, and he just felt that I was a big part of that. And uh, that's what I loved. Uh, you know, I wanted to a team that... Um, made me a big part of the of what we were trying to do and um that's what happened and i, I listen i i went and um i made my mind up i had a really good conversation with colin coldwood and when i signed actually it was probably the longest conversations i've ever had with a manager and um yeah, I, we, yeah we spent probably two two hours something like this just talking about football talking about everything with with colin calderwood um you know at the city ground actually and just in the office before i signed and um and obviously after that i signed and it was uh, it was great it was the right decision the right timing and um of course we then go on to start you know chasing promotion for the premier league then so um yeah i was lucky enough i, I enjoyed going in earlier than all the promotion chasing and all the Premier League chasing, you know. So because it was the the process of the work was great because it, you know it was just about adding to the team, and I was a a big part of that, which I enjoyed. Six months later, Billy comes in, and you obviously, I don't know what your relationship was like with him at, at Derby, but it just seemed that you and Lee Camp had maybe things to sort out. I don't know, you tell me, but he came in. What were you, when Billy comes in, what are you, are you thinking, oh no, there's the manager that I didn't play much under, or are you thinking it's a clean slate, we start again type thing? You, of course, you think that. I, my first thoughts was, um, I mean, there's a bunch of managers um, that we're considering, and you, you, sometimes you don't know. Sometimes you get an idea. Sometimes you don't know who the manager is going to be. But uh, we didn't know as players, even you know, until it was actually announced. So when it's announced, then of course you think, okay, well, yeah, I didn't play uh, under Billy at uh, at Derby much. Um, what's that going to be like? Uh, is he going to, you know, because I started off well, you know, for five, six months um, at Forest, I started off well, I did well, and I was scoring goals, and I'm really settling in to life at Forest. 
then change of manager, Colin Calderwood, leave, uh, Colin Calderwood leaves, Billy Davis comes in. And I was thinking, well, OK, is this, yeah, you know, is this going to be the same as as before where, you know, he's he has his own I ideas and direction? Um, and, you know, funnily enough, people always ask me, OK, did you, you know, was there a problem uh, with Billy and everything? No, there was, there was no problem. There was just a difference of opinion in, you know, whether I should have been playing or not playing at Derby. Uh, that was it. You know, that was just, you know, football decisions. But getting on with him, absolutely fine. But um, he comes in and I'm thinking, am I going to play? Am I, is he going to not want me here? I don't know. And, um, and <laughs> you know, all of these thoughts going through your mind because it's a different manager and he might come in with a completely different direction and uh, bring in his own players. You don't know. But uh, we actually, you know, after a day or so, we had actually a, a really good conversation. You know, I went into his office. He um, he called me in and uh, with the assistant there and um, we had a good chat and uh, he just he said, you know, listen, everything's a clean slate. Um, this is what I, I'm planning to do. This is the direction. You know, this is what I want to do with the team. I want us to improve. I want us to get better. Avoid relegation that year is that was number one, but also improve the team. And um, I see you being part of it. And um, you know, I, I I want to you know obviously with your help, you know, as we actually build something. So I was I, I felt better after that. We had a good conversation and. Um, and then I think from then on, I think it became a, actually a different relationship with Billy because I think it was better at Forest. Um, I think he, uh, you know, I think he, he really included me in in um, in how he wanted to, you know, build the team, uh, which was great. And also, you know, as well, I had to obviously do my bit because I also I had to perform on the pitch. So that happened, and um, you know, we things things slowly, slowly started to progress forward because it wasn't just me it was obviously you know you know people like lee camp and um you know obviously uh he was a derby at the same time as me so uh similar things and um you always think that as a player you know is what's the what's the new manager gonna do what's his direction and how's he gonna how's that gonna affect me and uh what i've been doing here so far so uh the the good thing for me is everything was was good well um and um you know i was I, I got to play and and uh we you know what i felt we were successful uh, at forest in our time i was going to say it led to a successful time because you avoided relegation in the end pretty comfortably and then had two fantastic seasons with billy in the in the playoffs in the championship you you're bagging the goals in and you mentioned the derby games already but there was a hat trick against leicester as well um you must have really enjoyed that that spell because it felt like the team was was really developing and playing some fantastic football. Yeah, and, and that was the key. And it all went back to so what happened in is uh, we had preseason in Portugal, and um, so Billy comes in in uh, what was it two thousand and nine, I believe. Yes, that would be right. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he he comes in at the beginning of two thousand and nine, um, and obviously Colin Caldwell got sacked. I think it was a week before or whatever. And um, so Billy started to implement his ways. And Billy's a little bit different because he pushes you. He pushes you to the limits. He he doesn't give you an inch. <laughs> you know, he is he, he pushes you to to the maximum as a player. And you there's no you know, resting and relaxing, it is high intense all the time. So he started to bring that, and but it took it takes time to ad ad adapt to that. And fast forward that next preseason, uh, we go, we were in uh, in preseason in in Portugal, and that's where the foundation was was really laid. So we had a really good um, time in Portugal, where we just you know we were honest with each other um as as a team and players billy now you know signed a few players but we were now uh looking to okay what are we going to do this season and the mentality changed and we are, we were good we we, we spent a lot of time in in the office uh sorry in the in the meeting room looking at video discussing um how do we go forward as a team and obviously we just avoided relegation so now how were we going to progress and we looked at we looked at okay uh, you know we we need to improve and by that improvement we're now going to chase promotion as well so those are the things we worked on so 
that season, you know, the type of football that we played was through what we were doing on the training pitch, through those preseason um, times, that the hours and hours that we spent together, breaking the game down, how, how are we going to play, how are we going to approach things? And then it was obviously the the players abilities then to to be able to improvise and play good football and and as a club we you know we we had technical players so when the football that we played was, it was i mean it was great it was enjoyable because we passed the ball around you know we played to our strengths you know i wanted the ball on the feet we wanted to dribble we wanted to play 1v1 we wanted to create lots of chances and we had those players around. And so the, the type of football came because, you know, those are the type of players that we had. But then also, um, I think everybody was motivated, you know, quite a young team, but everybody's motivated, good time. But also uh, with the help of Billy and him pushing us to the to the limits, it just gave us that next level. You know, we were uh, a lot of intensity, but but a lot of intensity when we we uh, we were trying to get the results as well. So, when, you know, when did it occur to you, Rob, that actually we've got something building here? I mean, um, it might go back to pre-season. I don't know. But when did you think actually we we could be a, a force in the division this year? Well, I mean, you mentioned when we go and 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 the hat trick, which I was coming to. The, the I think when we kind of beat Leicester five one. I think there was a different mentality that happened after that because, you know, a team like Leicester, good team, obviously a bit of a rivalry there as well, but it was slowly building because even it, like say about preseason, pre preseason was building the foundation. And as we start to go in the season, we, we were, we were believing, but we were believing with every result more than anything. So we, we were, we're still progressing. We're still trying to improve as a team. And I think when we beat Leicester five one was kind of like when we kind of put the flag down and said, "Okay, we're we're title contenders here." And I think you know, really around December time, I think we were pushing up to around fourth. And I think that's when we re around December is when we really start to believe, and we thought, "Okay, I think we can really do something because we've done well so far." All because we felt that there was a little bit more in the tank. And I think that was that was the the key. We just felt that there was a little bit more improvement. And, um, you know, I think, yeah, you know, when we beat Leicester 5-1, well, it gave us a, a huge jump. And then we really started to believe for the rest of the season that, okay, we, we can do something here. We don't know for sure, but we believe we can. And as a footballer, that's all you want. You want to believe. And it's funny because I, I think we, you know, as the season go on and we 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 go on towards the end of the season, we we started to have this belief. You know, I remember going to West Brom as well, and we beat West Brom uh, at, at their place. And even for a couple of months before then, we 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 had this belief. It was almost like um we were in this zone of of course we're not gonna get beat. <laughs> you know, it just yeah. felt that way. Yeah, uh, but we had good results. We were unbeaten. Um, we were doing well in most games, but also that extra confidence of we just don't feel that we're going to get beat. We we just feel that we've got first of all good players around. Somebody's going to make a difference. But then because of that, and we did in games. You know, we we went a long period of being unbeaten, but we just felt we're not going to lose here. I, I, you that know, West I, Brom game was probably the peak, wasn't it? In terms of, yeah. you know, a, an away performance, it, it it cannot in the championship, it cannot get better than that. Yeah, and and uh, it was all, you know, obviously they were doing well at the time and good team, and we just it was okay. Who's going to win? Um, who's you know, you know what's the, what's this forest? What is this Nottingham Forest here trying to upset? You know, the so-called the teams that were favourites before the start of the season. You know what's what's this team got? And we go and beat um, West Brom, and that was, I think, the kind of the pinnacle because the few months before that, we just felt unbeatable. We go to we go to even West Brom, and we just felt that, yeah, we we're gonna win this, and um, and that's what happened as well. So, you know, you you just have every now and again as a footballer, you have this zone that you go into, and you just feel that everything's gonna go right for you. You, you can't explain it. You don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. But you just feel that all your skills, everything is matching up. You know the stuff you do on a training pitch, the the games. You you're just gonna figure out a way, 
um, and we were doing that all the time. So it was nice to have that feeling because that's what helped us, you know, go towards the end of the season and eventually get to the playoffs. Um, but, you know, we, we, we really had a really good squad. And I think now we can look back and think, oh, we, you know, we had this player, that player. And, you know, we had the likes of, you know, Chris Gunter come in, Lee Camp in goals. And, you know, Aaron Ramsey played it with us in that in that season. So people forget mm -hmm. those those things, um, you know. So it's, you know, we really had a good team, good players that um, really were motivated. Those I kind of lumped them together. I mean, they're from two different seasons, but those playoff games against Blackpool obviously was um, was amazing, but horrendous at the same time. The home game at the the City Ground, and then uh, the Swansea game the year after was was bizarre in a in a different way. It, it felt like they were the opportunities for you know, if not to go up, certainly um, you could argue in both games probably should have got to Wembley. Oh, absolutely. We should have. Absolutely. We should have. It was, first of all, this the season before, you know, 2000 and, um, 2010. We, that was the season against Blackpool. We should have, we should have got to, you know, for example, you know, we finished third in that season. Blackpool finished sixth and Blackpool were nowhere near us, you know, in quality and, and team and how well we, we, we did that season. And even after the first leg, we lost the first leg. And even in the after the first leg, we thought, "Oh yeah, of course we're going to win in the in the second half because we got too much." You know, at home was a difference, and we started off well. I score after seven minutes, and we just felt, "Yeah, this is it. This is exactly how we felt, and this is it's happening right now." But what we didn't predict was Blackpool coming back and um, really playing some excellent football as well. I you know I had to congratulate them because they played some excellent football in that game. What, it, what an unbelievable game. And I think, you know, what is it? Finishes 6-4 in the end after mm. after extra time. But uh, that was devastating. I, I really, I was so sad after that game uh, because I felt, yeah, that was the time that we, we were supposed to get promotion. That was the time that we were supposed to beat Blackpool. And that's the time we were supposed to go to Wembley. Um, I, I felt that was it was our time. And um I was that was heartbreaking, really, really heartbreaking. And I, you know, I remember just kind of laying down uh, on on the final whistle on the pitch, and um, and I just had nothing in me because I was so sad, I was so devastated by the result because it was unexpected, and it felt that we were good enough, and we had a, a good enough team, and we did so well in that season, and this was our moment. So. It was really, really hard to take. That was really hard. I mean, for, fast forward the next season, we get to the playoffs again. And Swansea were really, really good. Great football, a really excellent team, really tough to play against. Um, and even that game, how everything went, you know, we draw nil-nil at home. And we, you know, they have a man sent off. We felt, of course, OK, this is our chance. It's supposed to be, it's supposed to go our way. And it, that was kind of where the game was, or the tie was lost, wasn't it? Because they, I think it was after about a minute. It was Neil Taylor was sent off, wasn't he, for Swansea? And you, you felt the way Forest are, they should tear Swansea apart at home yeah. with a man advantage. Yeah, and they, and they were very good, but the key was that send off because of that sending off. Everybody's mentality, even us on uh, us um, in, in 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 going into the game, we just felt ah. That's the advantage that we needed. And after about a minute or two minutes, and we just felt, oh, brilliant. That is the advantage that we need. We're going to then go on. I mean, come on, 11 against 10. Of course, we, we should. But it just never clicked. That game never clicked. We end up drawing nil-nil. But really, that's where the tie was lost because we knew it was going to be difficult away from home um, at Swansea. Uh, they would be a different team. And obviously, back to 11 v 11. So the first leg was really our chance because I think if we win that first leg and if we, um, and there was a lot of changes as well, uh, I think maybe disrupted our team in that first leg, you know, from the players that were playing in, in the season, there was a few changes and even the players, we were kind of all surprised because, you know, some of us expected to play, some of us expected to start. Uh, so there's a few changes, but 
I think it didn't matter because we had a good squad and the players that played on the pitch were good enough to go and win the game, but it just never clicked. It, we didn't score the goal in that first leg and that's where the the, le- the the tie was lost, really, because when we went away, it was it was really, really tough and everything went against us when we played in that second leg. I mean, we ended up uh, losing the game 3-1 and, you know, I... I come on in, in the second half and score with 10 minutes to go, but it just wasn't enough. The game was almost lost before that, even though we pushed we, we pushed them to the to the maximum. I mean, they go and score a goal really, really late. So it was 2-1 and we almost got a penalty as well to, to almost make it 2-2, which would have changed the game. But it, it, we were we were still behind at that time in that second leg. So, you know, our opportunity was definitely the first leg. How much of a surprise was it, Rob, that you weren't picked in that? that second leg because I think um well I certainly expected you to play in that in that game but you you started on the bench was was it a shock to you as well yeah it was a shock because I think Billy made I, I think it was you know you, I might be off but I think it was about four changes from the first leg um and um we were surprised because we f- we felt um well I mean it wasn't a bad game against Swansea in the first leg but certainly we needed our best team to go to Swansea to win the game because this is playoffs. This is it. Yeah. This is, you know, we, you know, it's not rotating players. It's not resting players. It was go to Swansea one game to go to, to Wembley and, and we're trying to get to, uh, promotion. This was it. So we, you know, and when you look at our squad, you know, you know, I didn't play. There was a couple of others that didn't play. And we we were all kind of looking around and thinking, uh, you know, this is not really our best team, and, and that's not disrespect to the players that that played because I thought very good players deserve um, some time, but we just felt as a squad, I think our best team would have maybe done um, done you know obviously you know ideally got a better result really, um, but yeah. I think the changes really threw us off as a team a little bit in that second leg as well. Uh, because what you do have is when when you, the team, you know, it might be one or two, but when your team feels, yeah, this is our strongest, strongest team with goals defensively, midfield, you, you know, is this our strongest team? We didn't, I think going into that game, we didn't feel that. And, you know, obviously I was on the bench. There's a couple of other players on the bench. And it just kind of, we never got really the goals um, because we created chances, but we never got the goals that uh, could have made the difference in that second leg. And, um, and if I'm right, know. that was your final game, if, if memory serves. I'm just trying to yeah. put the pieces together. That would have been your your final Forest game, would it? Yeah, it was my final game in the end, and it ended up being my final goal as well for Forest. And um, and that was uh, obviously uh, it's tough because the way we lost to Swansea and we felt we were still. You know, one of the best teams, and should have gone through uh, over the two legs. Over the two legs, and um, you know, the the game ends up that way. And I didn't, um, I didn't play Forest again after that. And that's the season where it went into the summer. We lost, obviously, in the playoffs. Went into the summer, and then that's when um, Billy Davis got sacked. Actually, uh, pretty much, I think it was almost straight after the game, after that Swansea game, or maybe a couple of days after. And um, obviously, Billy left. And uh, Steve McLaren uh, came in and uh, I was also out of contract uh, at the same time. So it, I had a decision to make whether I stay, uh, who was the new manager going to be. Obviously, I then found out it was Steve McLaren and um, what was my my direction next. So it, it funnily enough, that Swansea goal and, and the game ended up being uh, the final time I put the, the red, you know, the, the, the shirt on. and. Um, you know, got to got to represent Forest. Rob, it's been great fun chatting. I'm sorry we had to end on that note, but all good yeah. things, as they say, come to an end. Um, really good to catch up again. And, no uh, problem. No doubt, Thank keep in touch. Thanks for your time. Yeah, cheers. Thank you.